You're watching Chronicle Chamber, and I'm Scott. Today we're going to be talking about Defenders of the Earth, Issue 2 from Mad Cave Studios. Let's dive in. As you can see by this cover, we have a beautiful shot of the Phantom. This is a more Phantom-centric story, this issue. And we have him nice, nicely in this spotlight glow here in the shadows of an alley. You know, we see the stage door, the Mandrake, the Magician poster. Really sets the mood for what we're going to see and what's going to go on. This issue was written by Dan DiDio with art by Jim Calafiore and colors by Wancho. Has a beautiful open opener, very colorful. A lot going on here, jumps right into the action. If you read Defenders of the Earth issue one, this picks up kind of off the threads we saw at the end of that issue. So we have Lothar and LJ, they're back in the Five Nations now. They're on their way to answer a distress call when they encounter Sing Pirates. And as Phantom fans know, Sing Pirates are tied to the Phantom. And that's where they encounter a new one. This isn't the one we are familiar with, but he is wearing the classic Phantom costume we all know and love. See, we have the striped uh, undergarments here. And this Phantom is someone from Kit Walker's past. I won't say who, but if you read the first issue or watched our review, that was something that was teased in that issue. And so there's a little bit of a verbal threat here. You know, the colors and the action, real intense, nice setup. You know, we get a shot of the ring. You know, we get a lot of emotions here. Cali is really good at showing anger. And that's one of his strengths. And with the colors from Wancho, it works beautifully. Elsewhere, we have Mandrake the Magician doing a show that doesn't really go well. And so he uses his magic to turn his audience into babies. Color really makes this stand out. Yet again, the Phantom, the one we know and love, is watching. And after the show, they get to talking about what's going on. And this is really our vehicle to help further the exposition we saw last issue. We know that Crotan, son of Ming the Merciless, the enemy of the Defenders and Flash Gordon specifically, has been helping humanity after Ming's, you know, supposed death and... He needs support and help from them to build his base, and in turn, he's going to apparently lift humanity up, whatever that means. And so Mandrake and the Phantom don't believe it. They're expressing doubt, and then they go out into an alley, and bam, Phantom's attacked, and he gets stabbed. Elsewhere, we go to the Arctic, where we see Crotan and Flash Gordon with his son, Rick Gordon. And while they're listening to him and going along with his plan... Rick Gordon is really the hero here who expresses doubt over everything. And so we get this, you know, this segmenting of the team. That's really what this issue does the best, is it really splits everybody apart and shows them where they're at. But it's also a vehicle to bring back Zuffy, who, you know, in the cartoon, he looked a little more cartoonish and kiddish. And here you could see the line work from Cali Fiore kind of gives him more of a form and Maybe even an aged up form. Hard to say, but it just definitely looks like an older creature. And maybe that was the intention. And so it's nice to see Zuffy's return. You know, if you've been a fan of the cartoon and liked him, or you bought that Phantom figure from NECA that came with him, here he is back in full form. Back in the Five Nations. They part their ways with this new Phantom. And head to where they were originally going to go. This village that was had a distress call or a distress beacon that was put out. And so this is where they encounter total destruction. Something's going on in the Five Nations. We're not sure yet. But it's also where we see Jetta, who has been missing since last issue. And so this issue really kind of gathers around the theme at this point. It's about birthright and identity. And so Jetta is talking about how, you know, her father went along with the Councils of the Phantom and never questioned it, and she felt denied. And here, she's going along with someone who definitely questioned the Council of the Phantoms and allowed her to claim her birthright for herself. So interesting dynamic. And really, like I said, birthright is kind of the theme here. You see Rick Gordon, you know, kind of separating from his dad and Crotan with what's going on. We've had LJ and Lothar separated from their own country and coming back and seeing, you know, it in flames. And then we go back to Kit Walker and his battle in this alley after talking with Mandrake the Magician. And, you know, he lives after getting stabbed. And he tells the thug that, you know, this person should have made sure that the person they were attacking, i.e. the Phantom, wasn't already dead. 
And that's when we get the weird tease at the end of this issue. That the Phantom apparently has been dead for five years. Or so he says. And he is quite literally the ghost who walks. So this is definitely a departure from a lot of the comics and stories that have appeared over the years. But it's also very enticing. And so this is only issue two. We have plenty more issues to go and we can see where this goes. But obviously... We have a lot more in play beyond just the um, introductory plots that were introduced last issue. So a lot to look forward to, a lot to see here. Beautiful issue overall. Art is pretty good. The only complaints I had were there were a couple sequences where Mandrake the Magician was walking and it looked like the proportions were a little off. But I do like the facial features. They're kind of a mix between realistic and a little cartoony to kind of lean into both the cartoon and also modern comic storytelling. For more reviews, comics, news, etc. for Defenders of the Earth or The Phantom, check out ChronicleChamber.com. For more from me personally, you can find me at my website at ScottWaldenWrites.com or on Instagram and threads at Writer underscore Scott. Thanks!